You know how we hear that people in third world countries sometimes are unfortunate enough to be dying from dysentery and cholera and that kind of thing? Sure, because, the water's bad. Yeah, the water's bad. And we are fortunate enough, I guess, to have our water disinfected so that we're not, not dying from those horrible types of dysentery. However, we are getting sick from our disinfected water byproducts. Yeah, it's, there's about 600 products, byproducts, from interaction with organic chemicals uh, that lead to lots of products that are dangerous for us. And maybe we, we might not die right away and we're not getting dysentery and that kind of thing, but there are things that we get the, down the road, you know, like cancer and neurological problems and we might get miscarriages and then might not even relate the miscarriage to that, you know, so. Well, the EPA monitors some of it, but it's a big job. And some of the big things that they like to check on is halocetic acids, which are combinations of iodine, bromine, and uh, chlorine that form acetic acids that are very toxic. And they're the ones that Vicki's talking about that are apt to cause problems with pregnancies, uh, with neurological defects, and with cancer. And one of the other things that we know they do is they block the production of ATP, which is the energy currency of the cell, and what causes uh, us to be able to do the work that we do. ATP to a per to a cell is like gasoline is to a car. Well, they so can have to have it can it. also change our DNA. It changes how our uh, DNA transcribes into RNA, which means it affects what uh, kinds of proteins our bodies can make. And if it doesn't make the right ones, we've got problems. So this whole business of purifying water is absolutely critical. You don't want to be sick, but at the same time, uh, there are so many things in it that what we have to do is use our heads and and take advantage of some of the home water systems that we can purchase. If we get water that's delivered to our home that has no serious amounts of microbes in it that can cause dysentery or any other illness, that's a big plus. But we can do more once the water gets here. We can go ahead and we can take some of those toxic products out. I mean, even something as simple as a carbon uh, filter will do a lot to protect you. But it doesn't do the whole job because the water that we get from uh, our water companies has got lots of problems with it in terms of uh, of impurities. I mean, look at all the things from, I know. from pills. Well, well, yeah, from all kinds of medications, from everything from antibiotics to pain pills, even to sure, hormones, birth even. control pills. Right. All that. And, and, you know, some of it is from just throwing it down the toilet, but some of it is because we excrete it into, into the toilet. Exactly. And then it gets into the groundwater, and now we've measured the amounts of these medications that are present in our reservoirs, and it's shocking that there's so much. And also, we don't even know what happens when all these chemicals combine with one another and exactly. with, the, with the water disinfecting byproducts. Sure. And then we've got problems like chloramine. You know, chloramine is, is not the worst thing in the world, but it, it kills our fish, and it's sort of like a sign that says maybe that's not so good for us. Uh, but again, it, it, it gets rid of the infection that's there. Then we have the problems with fluoride which is another big deal that's a topic for another discussion. And if you want to learn about that, go to drsabuto.com and put fluoride in the search box, and you'll get loads of videos and audios that talk about why fluoride is such a bad idea. You know how we hear so often that people end up getting antibiotic-resistant infections? And that wouldn't just be from, you know, taking them ourselves on purpose when we're sick or from eating them in in meat that they've added the antibiotics to. But also, they end up in our water, but also there are things like the ingredients in hand sanitizers. Mm -hmm. And those can be really toxic, and those can also build up a resistance to um, to the antibacterial action of these things. Everything and adds up. And some of them, like the triclosan that's in many hand sanitizers, and now they're adding it even in toothpaste and shampoos and things. When that's combined with chlorine, like the chlorine that's in the water, that can cause chloroform. So we're like poisoning ourselves exactly. even more than what the byproducts are from the disinfectants. Right. So what kind of a water filter should you get? Probably don't want to get distilled water because it takes everything out and then you're drinking water that's that doesn't have any minerals in it and, and is not the best for your system because you need minerals to go with that. Uh, if you use uh, a system like we have, we do hydrolysis, which means that we split 
the water into acid and alkaline fractions. We save the alkaline fraction for drinking and we use the acid part for watering plants or for cleaning our hands or vegetables or whatever we want to do there. And then I think it's important if you're going to get a system, you might as well alkalinize the water and manage the size of the clusters of water that are present because, see, water is a polar molecule, which means that it has an electric charge. The different ends of the molecule, one's positive and one's negative. They form different sized clusters of water molecules. And when you look at a cell, it's not just a sack full of water. The size of the clusters makes a difference as to where these molecules can go, and they form an intricate lattice that has an effect on our health that we're just beginning to learn how important it is. So yes, we've got a problem. We've got water that is uh, being delivered to us that's less than ideal. We should be grateful that we're not getting infected, but we should be doing things and learning more about water does so that when we get it from the tap and we do something to it in our home to filter it, we've got water that's really healthy for us than water that we have to be concerned about. And we also need to be careful of the water that's in plastic bottles. Another good point. Because it's leaching out the plastic that's in the bottles, and some of the water that's bottled is tap water. Exactly. You know, if you read where it comes from, sometimes that's what it says. And another thing to, uh, that we do anyway is we use a shower filter mm -hmm. because the water that's coming out of the shower, we're inhaling the chlorine fumes. You know, it's like inhaling gas. So, um, and it's not good for our skin either. So if you do have something like a swimming pool or a spa or something for your fish, it might be worth it to look into ozonators also. Right. There are a lot of simple things that you can do that can make your water a lot safer. So let's concentrate a little bit on that. And remember that we're made of 70% water. So it's no small thing that we have this much water in our bodies. And if we put the wrong stuff in, body's just not going to function.